my name is Jessica. I am the production manager here at Greenfire Farms, a rare and exotic small chicken farm located in North Florida. Today I'm going to be showing you around. We're going to go check out what happens here at Greenfire Farms. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have one of our pin sizes. You can see we have three different sizes, small, medium, and large. Our large rotation pins we'll get to in a second, but these size pins, we keep about 8 to 12 birds in each. We have, as we say, small flocks compared to most hatcheries. Okay, here are Hannah Laura, which is an amazing chicken breed that we hear at Green Fire Farms. This is an example of one of the pins we have. So we have like a roost bar, a nice nest box, and we have their feeder, and they have a nipple water system so they can get water from daily. Here is one of our large rotational pins. And we try to rotate the pins to allow the pins to rest. The birds get access to a lot more forage and grass. Um, so these birds are a gold death layer, which I'm sure you guys have seen on our social media. They're quite beautiful. They're great egg layers. They're, one of, they're just an amazing bird to have. But yeah, so they, they, they hang out in here every day. They get access to all this great stuff. But I think it's awesome. So rotational grazing, um, which we implement here at Green Fire Farms, essentially means that the birds will be in one pen for X amount of time, while another pen is allowed to rest, to regrow, and then when we deem appropriate, we will move them over to that pen that's been resting for a few months or so, um, so that they don't ever go um, to a point where they do not have grass. Hey, so here we have another section on the farm that's close to the garden, which you guys have seen or will see soon. Um, we use the same rotational grazing system. So here are our Felder, and they'll be rotated um, probably next month or so to allow their, their current pin to rest for a little bit. Okay, so here's another section of our farm. We have some other small pins. Um, typically we have, in these types of breeding pins, roughly about eight birds to six females one to two boys depending on what kind of bird it is um, so on the farm we have approximately just short of a thousand breeder birds here which um, is they're spread out all over the farm some are in the large rotational pins and then we rotate them every so often then we have the medium sized pins which we saw earlier and then we have some small breeder pens which we're at right now okay so i'm about to take you guys into our incubator shed which is where we house our two incubators where we um, we collect the eggs, we wash them if they're needed to be washed, we sort them, organize them, load them into the incubator, and then three weeks later, hatch day, we get little baby chicks. So before we go in there, we do have a foot bath in front of the door, um, so we, we do wash our feet um, or dip our feet into the solution to help sanitize our shoes. Um, but once that's done, we get to head on in. Here we have our two incubators. Um, they house approximately 5,000 eggs, I believe. After the eggs are collected, sorted, rinsed, they are um, put in the fridge, which is at 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which simply just slows down the development of the eggs um, so that we can then sort everything and load it into the incubator once a week. Usually this is done on Monday. So what we do is we sort the eggs, like I mentioned earlier, once a week and then we set them into our incubators with a date circled on the outside of the egg and then when it's time to do so they will be unloaded from the incubator um, brought to a dark room and then we hand um, candle them by hand and then set the hatch or as the eggs are ready to be candled they are loaded and sorted into trays that are loaded into our hatchers for the last three days the eggs are placed in the hatcher typically about day 17 and on Monday morning we come in to trays full of baby chicks um, and then from there we do quality control and then ship them out to you guys later that day. So here we have our vaccination machine which will be what we use to vaccinate our chicks, our daily chicks for Merrick's. Um, it's a pneumatic vaccinator 
makes it go quite quickly. We also have our amazing t-shirts in here. We have our three different kinds that we sell. Actually, four different kinds now. Our new red Palo Sky shirts is where they're located. So you guys put in t-shirt order. Um, this is also the room that we ship out from weekly. So as you can see, the room is quite small. And we are really hoping to upgrade our space beginning of next year. So, fingers crossed that happens. It'll make a world of difference. Um, so when we say we do not have time to answer every phone call or every email on half day, you know, we are dealing with a little stress in a small situation. But hopefully next year we'll have our upgraded space and everything is quite more efficient. Okay, so right now I'm standing inside the room that we call our brooder room, or brooder shed actually. Um, this is where we keep any day old chicks that we need to replenish our flocks or to work on our own breeding projects. Um, the birds are housed in here from, like I said, the day they hatch until approximately one to two months, depending on breed size and um, other environmental factors. As you can see, the birds are housed in what we call the squire cages. They have the same like water system that we saw outside. Um, so as they, the bird droppings are collected on this, this plastic um, tray, and every morning it's rinsed off. All of the waste is then collected in a tank outside which um, we can then use later as fertilizer. I'm Jackson. I'm a farmhand at Green Fire Farms and today I'm in the pen where we house our Osaba Island pigs. This pen is located right next to our garden here at Green Fire Farms and we don't have these pigs to sell them or anything but they sure do make our farm a happier and more fun place. Hi, I'm Luke. I'm another farmhand here and these are our farm cats, Buddy and Lucky. They help out with the rodents and they're really cute so what's not to love? My name is Caroline. I am the head gardener here at Greenfire Farms and I'm going to show you around our beautiful raised bed garden this morning. Well, it's summertime here in North Florida, so we are growing a lot of classic hot weather crops. Woo! Here we have some okras, beautiful okra plants, and there's a few okra pods growing in there. This is a cool variety of pepper that we have called a fish pepper. They're variegated. Hi, buddy. And they're spicy. It's an heirloom from New England, cultivated by gardeners who would add them to their fish stews and chowders. And that's why it's called the fish pepper. At Green Fire, we really like to focus on sustainability. So. Many of the plants that we grow are considered heirloom. They're organic in their cultivation, so we don't use any synthetic chemicals or fertilizers on any of the plants that we grow. So the soil that is in our garden beds is compost that comes entirely from our chicken operation. We let it break down in our compost pile and then add it to our garden beds, and it makes this beautiful nice rich dark soil instead of having to dispose of the chicken manure and it replenishes those nutrients sinks the carbon back into the soil this is a, a very cool plant although I'm biased I think that about all of our plants I think they're all really cool this one in particular is called a seminal pumpkin so it's a variety that is native to Florida um, it grows really well here, as you can see, very green and happy, and it produces tons and tons and tons of beautiful little orange pumpkins. So our garden beds themselves are made from recycled concrete. Um, these concrete blocks came from a previous construction project, something was removed, so we had all this spare concrete and they were used to construct these raised garden beds. These are some of our uh, compost tumblers. So in addition to our really large chicken manure compost pile, we utilize these for some of our smaller garden waste. You can tumble it, it aerates your compost, and we utilize this in our garden beds. So these containers that you see behind me, and you probably have seen in a lot of shots from photos from around our farm, um, are multi-purpose. They 
the bottom level functions as an office for our sales crew, solo crew. So the middle level functions as a, an example living space. And the top level works as a greenhouse. It uh, gets nice and warm up there, all while using recycled shipping containers. This is our cook shack. Um, it serves as a outdoor kitchen for the veggie crew. We prepare a lot of preserves and right now I'm in the process of making a hot sauce with our spicy pepper varieties that we're growing here on the farm. This is where we wash and dry our vegetables, also our storage area for the produce. So this is where all the magic happens. So welcome to, this is our beautiful one acre North Florida citrus grove. We have about five or six different varieties of citrus trees out here. It might not look like much from here, but this watering system is powered by the sun. We use solar energy to power our well pump. It pumps water out of our pond, up this hill, and down to all of these beautiful, healthy green citrus trees. So here you can see one of our beehives, and these are the real workers here on the farm. We all do an important job, but I'd say the bees have one of the most important jobs of all. They help us pollinate, not only these citrus trees, but a lot of the flowers and vegetables in our vegetable gardens, the wildflowers that grow in our fields and in the forest. So these bees do a lot of important work here at Green Fire Farm. All right, this is the end of our farm tour video. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about Green Fire Farm's mission, or if you want to see what breeds we currently have available, please visit our website. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching! watching.